Scientists who study how living things interact and how they are distributed are called ecologists. This video looks at some of the ways ecologists can measure things, looking at environmental factors such as temperature, light intensity and pH that can all affect the distribution of organisms, and also ways of collecting and sampling organisms directly. Let's look first at some of the environmental factors that affect where species are found. We're looking here at plants as well as animals, so one of the most important factors to consider is light intensity. This can be measured using a light meter. And using this, ecologists can compare open and shaded areas, for example. Soil quality also affects plant growth, and an important factor here is pH. Most plants have a preference for how acid or alkaline the soil is, and grow best when the soil is like that. Soil pH is best measured using a pH probe that is simply put into the soil and a reading taken. The last environmental factor we will look at here is temperature. Again, this will affect how well plants in particular grow, as we know from our work on photosynthesis and limiting factors. A temperature probe is more accurate and will give a quicker reading than a traditional thermometer. Ecologists are interested in the distribution of organisms in different places. This means they want to know which species are present in an area and how many of them there are. Often they're dealing with very large areas or very small organisms so that counting every single one is extremely difficult and not realistic. To help, they use sampling to make an estimate about the number of a species. For example, if they wanted to know the number of weeds in a field, they would first of all measure the whole area of the field. They would then choose some random points to sample. It's important to select the sample randomly so that you don't choose more interesting areas that will affect your results. The larger the sample, the more reliable and accurate your prediction is likely to be, although of course it will take you more time. In this case, once the sample points have been chosen, you would use a quadrat, which is a wire grid that is 0.25 meters squared in area. By counting the number of weeds in this small area and adding all of the samples together, you can then multiply up to calculate roughly how many weeds there would be in the whole field. If a scientist wanted to know about the distribution of small, crawling insects that are hard to find and observe, they would use a pitfall trap. This is a small cup sunk into the ground, usually with a rain cover on top, to stop the trap filling with water. These can be left in place for several days before they're collected and the animals inside identified and counted. You could use these traps to compare the types and number of animals living in different areas, for example, or to see how their distribution changes as you move away from a landmark like a hedge or a river. Flying insects such as hoverflies or butterflies will obviously not fall into pitfall traps. These can be sampled and collected using a sweep net. The same equipment can be used in a pond, river or lake to sample the small animals living in the water. Finally, pooters can be used to collect up small animals to be identified later. This is a sealed cup with two straws, one of which is placed very close to the animal you want to collect. By sucking into the other tube, the animal is drawn into the cup. So, we've looked at how ecologists measure environmental factors and the distribution of organisms in a, diff in a given area. Environmental factors will affect which animals and particularly which plants will grow well in the location and include temperature, light intensity and soil pH. All can be measured on location using the appropriate probes. To measure the distribution of organisms it's important to sample an area as there will be far too many individuals to count. This should be done randomly to prevent bias. Quadrats can be used to sample an area for plant life by measuring what is found in a known small area. Pitfall traps collect ground-based small animals such as beetles and bugs. Sweet nets are useful for sampling flying insects and pond life, while pooters can be used to suck up small individual creatures to enable them to be identified more easily.